Yo, long hairs. Welcome to Let It Ride. This is episode 95 and we are live. Here we talk long hair and business, advocate for hair equality and celebrate men's long manes with hair whips and high fives. If you're a guy with long hair, you're in the right place. We are stoked up at the Long Hairs HQ. I'm El Rubio here with El Moreno. Yeah, what up? Our guest on this episode is a longtime long hair follower, supporter, contributor, and fully initiated brother in the international fraternal assemblage of men with long hair. On the Long Hairs blog, he is the author of Men, Women, and Respect Hair Can Teach Us and the Long Hairs of the WWE. He is a man who has expanded his body mass through the clock-like consistent lifting of progressively heavier weights, considerately placing them back exactly where he found them each and every time. Hailing from the smokehouse capital of the United States of America in Kansas City, Missouri, standing at 5 feet 10 inches Mm -hmm. tall and weighing in at 225 pounds of rock-solid main appeal, perpetually repping the long hair's head wraps and apparel as he bursts through personal records and has permanently emblazoned the bound shears upon his forearm in a token of lifelong brotherhood. His given name is Brian Morehouse. He's commonly known as the real Loholly, but around here he's called El Levanto Pesos. Welcome to Let It Ride. Oh my, that is the best intro I think I have ever heard. Not just for myself. I feel like I should be running through a freaking brick wall, going down the WWE ramp, getting into that ring and winning the world championship belt. That was absolutely amazing. And I have to say, you fudged the numbers for me a little bit there, and I appreciate it. Hey, um, hopefully in your favor. <laughs> oh, it was absolutely, absolutely my favor. I am, I am absolutely not five foot ten, two twenty-five. I am one of the shortest creators on YouTube sitting in at five foot six tall, 181.6 pounds of pure unadulterated sex machine. But other than that, dude, I, again, I am blown away by that intro. Thank you so much. Just giving you a little extra juice there, but I wasn't going to say anything, man. You could have just let it fly. (laughs) Hey, the one thing that I've taught myself. Hey, Hey, you know what? Maybe by the age of 28, I'll finally hit that growth spurt that my parents were always talking about and just skyrocket, you know, hit that six foot two, look like the rock with long hair, just absolutely thick and jacked. Mm-hmm. Might be coming still, might be coming still. So, hey, let's kick it off, man. Just for those of you, uh, for those who haven't met you before, just introduce yourself. Where are you now? Uh, what are you up to? And maybe just how did you get connected initially with the long hairs? So my story is actually kind of a really, really weird one. Uh, It follows the classic tale of unrequited love. So I moved to Kansas City from Lincoln, Nebraska, right when I turned 21 for a girl. That lasted for six months. We broke up. But during that time, I was told that I had to have short hair. I could not have any facial hair. I couldn't wear polos. There was a list of things that I could not do and so after we broke up my heart was just broken i was sad and over the next few months just things started ticking and ticking and ticking in my head until my final haircut on december 23rd one day before my 22nd birthday i walked into the barber shop basically for the last time i got that nice fresh tight fade and from there it's been history i started growing my hair out and i believe that was five and a half years ago actually so i'm hitting that five and a half year mark um and from that if that was five and a half years ago that would have taken us back to 2016 uh, about one year after the long hairs website launched but i did not find you guys until and i stress this until i started googling googling how to take care of my hair because growing up all that i had was a short mane One time I did try to grow it out, got to like right here, but it was a greasy, nasty, disgusting mess. (laughs) My mother had short hair. My father had short hair and a beard. He dressed as Santa Claus. So I had no help in the department of figuring my hair care out until your boy found the long hairs through Google. And that was a game 
changer. There were articles advocating for men with long hair. There were articles advocating for people getting jobs. And I'm a very non-traditionalist in a lot of aspects. I think that people should be judged not based on how they look, but how they act and how they respond to situations. I, unlike a lot of my peers, don't have a four-year college degree. I think that going the unconventional route is what being a long hair means to me, proving that I am not only you know, walking the walk and talking the talk, but I am contributing and trying to make the community better for not only long hairs, but for everyone that is involved in this world. So from there, again, I'm going on a long-winded rant if you haven't figured that out. But from there, I wrote an article on my own website uh, where I was doing personal training and things like that. And I reached out to you guys, I believe, and I actually uh, have pretty solid fact on this one. I reached out to you exactly two years into my hair journey uh, on December 23rd, 2017, I linked up with you guys. From there, I made my first purchase, uh, actually six months before that. June 10th, it arrived, 2017. I got the Black Mamba, the Ninja Gaiden. I believe uh, the Blue mm -hmm. and White Star original. And then I got two packs of hair ties and El the Capitan. Koozie. Yeah, El Capitan. Thank you very much. And those the were the first We got to bring those back. Dude, the koozie is clutch, but I have to say now my collection has grown to four beanies, I think four shirts, one of which I was graciously gifted. Thank you. <laughs> that tank top is one of the most comfortable I've ever worn. I have got, I have about 20 head wraps, head wraps. right now. Damn, nice. That's great. And that's, that is not hair ties. I've gone through my fair share pack of hair ties. I had the V2. That was my first purchase was when the V2s came out. That's when I bought. I have V2s. I have V3s. Mm -hmm. I've gotten to see these things genuinely hold 70 plus pounds by themselves. This is what this community is about for me, right? It's that communication. It's that high dedication to quality. And honestly, it's just about having a, a damn good time. Yeah, man. Dude, 2016. That, I mean, you're you're one of the very first guys that we started like interacting with on a regular basis or chatting with or whatever, getting to know. And I mean, it's freaking five years back now. I, I, it's a long ways. Yeah. It's a long ways and long hair. I mean, <laughs> you know, we've gone through the great cut. We're preparing for the great cut in 2024. I will be able to attend the great cut 2024. And I don't know how much I'm going to give, but I'm going to give as much as I can and as much as I should. Yeah, uh, man. looks like you got a lot to work with right now too. So you keep that going for a while, man. Yeah. Major. It'd be no problem. You get, and you'll still have probably hair like mine. After you donate. If you're just listening and not watching, where are you, Brian? You're at least down beyond the armpit, beyond the areola. Like you're is this, am, is this the I'm, longest it, it has ever been? I is took about two to three hair off a couple months ago. Um oh. it's pretty close. Uh down two to three. I like I said, down right about the areola area, a little bit lower than that. All right. Um took a couple inches off because it was getting super tangly. Uh, just took my wife's advice because she cuts her own hair. She said, hey, just feel out where your uh, dead ends are. Don't be afraid to trim it. It's going to grow back. And I did. My hair bounced back. It got curly again. You know, you can't be afraid to trim the dead ends. No, just a nice yeah, little maintenance get, trim. Yeah, got to do it. That's a must. Money. So tell us about the meaning of your L moniker. Uh, you were also one of the first guys to come up with an L moniker, the El Rubio, El Moreno, and... You and other guys just started coming up with your own monikers and, and ripping them off. What, what does yours mean? It means lift weights. The lift weights, I think, is actually the basic full definition of that. <laughs> um, and that's that's my life, right? When I was 18, 17, actually, uh, again, all my major decisions happened right around my birthday. When I was 17, I was 240 pounds at five foot six. And I decided that short, fat, and angry was no way to go through life. So I decided to lose weight. Um, through my journey, I have lost over a hundred pounds. Uh, wow. At one point, I went from 240 to 140. Um, then last year, I got up to 205 again because I was chasing that 500 pound squad. It was my my saying at that moment in time was 500 or 500. Either the scale is going to read it or I'm going to squat it. Doesn't matter. One of those is coming first. And wow. then I think I'm back to 181 as 181.6 as of last Friday. Nice. Cut Damn, that down, dude. Uh, well, first of all, I wouldn't have uh, 
elaborated on the 225 if i would have realized that you had lost that much weight i meant as a compliment because you're getting huge just from lifting but that probably might not have come off the right way uh but 181 i mean having lost over 100 pounds at one point just fitness with lifting with a massive focus in your life it absolutely is it's one of the few things that i have complete control over i have control of my attitude going over to the gym i have control of my interactions with the people in that area again i choose the environment that i get to be in i choose what i get to put my body through and every decision that is made whether or not it's um going off program staying on program is something that is absolutely you know necessary to keeping myself sane throughout different times it for me it's definitely a form of therapy um you know Going to the gym after a bad day, just putting your headphones on, going to it is awesome. You know, if you're having a really good day and you're feeling like you're wanting to have conversation, you can have that there too. You know, there's a community aspect of it. When I first moved down to Kansas City, I linked up with a powerlifting team that gave me no end in grief. They're a bunch of great guys, and that's actually who opened up the gym that I'm training at now. So, you know, I've gotten to see this from just a small dinky little group based out of the back of a separate gym to now owning its own community and helping people grow. Um you know, they gave me crap for having long. I started growing up my hair with them and they started making fun of me for it. And, you know, I, I got razzed for it, got, you know, the head shaved because these were all big 300 plus pound guys. <laughs> all of them had shaved heads or short cropped hair. And, yeah. you know, I've gotten my experience of, you know, I've had my hands uh, held out for a hundred and eight, 1080 pound squat. I got to see that in person and wow. seeing things like that is, is insane. Um, actually, uh, unfortunately, I don't get to track work has been crazy, but my wife will be in San Diego next week to watch a massive powerlifting event in San Diego called the Kern Open. And one of the women from my gym, absolutely one of the strongest human beings that I know, both emotionally and physically, is about to set a world record on deadlift, on squat, on bench. She's going to shake things up in San Diego. No way. Dang, what's the show? Uh, it's called the Kern U.S. Open. Um, I believe it's going to be definitely live streamed. Uh, so it's it's going to be an absolutely insane time. And then here in Kansas City, we are going to host the largest raw uh, meet of all time. We're going to be having people from all over the world coming to visit us from Las Vegas. We're going to have people hopefully from Russia. It's just going to be absolutely insane. And it's going to be posted. Um, highlights, I believe, are going to be actually on ESPN. So there's just massive events and massive changes coming, you know, to the powerlifting world. And I've gotten to see it for the past, you know, I've been lifting religiously almost for the past nine years, powerlifting specifically for the past, you know, six and a half years and getting to see the sport grow is much like my hair. It's amazing. It's fun. And like the more that I learn about that, the more that I get to learn about myself. And it, it ties back into long hair because just like growing your hair out, you need patience, you need dedication, you need commitment. And you know, long hair and lifting just kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, man. Getting, getting to that point. Um, you know, when you were overweight, feeling down on yourself and everything, where, where did you find the motivation to get in there every day in and day out? And how did that go? Cause it, <laughs> it had to start slow, right? Just like the hair growth and then it built up and over time, all of a sudden you got a lot going on for yourself. So kind of take us back there. and How'd you summon the willpower to, <laughs> get in there so uh as with most decisions in my life split second decision based around a woman oh yeah that's that's how it okay. goes that's how it always goes with me uh <sighs> you know i was always active as a kid it was just the amount of food that i was consuming just was absurd you know i played football i did track and field i mowed lawns i worked at a zoo i was a bus boy so i was doing very physical labor but to counteract that i was eating like ten thousand calories a day easily every single day mm -hmm. and so i'm sitting at 240 i'm like oh i could stand to lose a little bit of weight but i didn't really feel motivated and i was having a conversation with a girl and she goes hey you know i kind of think i want to lose 15 pounds and in my mind i went she's kind of cute yeah you, know what you should do and this is totally I, this is 10 years ago. Obviously, not all of this is good to think anymore. Again, I've grown and matured as a person. I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a bet with her. See who can lose weight the most. And whoever loses, uh, whoever gets down to the 15 pounds first gets a free dinner on the other person. Nice. I actually ended up winning, okay. but I ended up paying for dinner as well right. because <laughs> I'm a sucker. And she brought a friend along. And I was like, 
son of a gun. So I ended up paying for <laughs> dinner for three, but nice. that started my weight loss journey. You know, I just cut out soda and I went from, uh, like I said, I went from two, 240 down to like 215 in the span of like two months. Okay. So I lost like 25 pounds just from cutting out in there. I just really became about the gym life. It was a single day I was going in. It was that dedication. Um, there's a small gym chain here in the Midwest. I don't know if it's on any of the coasts uh, called Prairie Life Fitness. Um, and that was the first gym that I ever belonged to. And one of the one of the trainers there, I hired her to help me out to kind of figure things out. And they ended up using my transformation uh, on their billboards. So no if you have lived sick. in Nebraska <laughs> and you've driven down the roads and this was, again, <laughs> Eight, nine years ago, yeah. odds are you saw my half naked torso just <laughs> driving down the road. Uh, the dude. transformation billboard. Yeah. It's Impressive. it's a classic. And I can I can say that I have done and I've never dis I've disappointed my parents on a few things, but I can say that I've done my best to disappoint them by doing every single thing that a broke uh hippie kid would do. I've gotten paid to do art, I've been paid to be in a band, I've done slam comedy. I've walked dogs. I've been on billboards. I've done it. I've done a lot. <laughs> nice, man. Dude, so the momentum started going. And when, when did it, be, like, you you started getting real serious about the powerlifting? So you said six years ago, but you were in pretty decent shape by that point. And then I was, what made you go into, like, hey, I want to go even one notch further? So when I was in community college, uh, I had a roommate. He and I were planning on going to the state. We were both just sitting there like, I wonder how strong we are. That's always that's always the question, right? It's it's never it's never how strong is somebody else. It's, I wonder how strong I am right now. Can I can I beat that guy? Can I beat that guy up? You know, yeah. I was never good at phys I was I was never good at aggressive like physical contact sports. But for me, it was all about like how can I change? How can I challenge myself? How can I go and have this fun? So he and I are going back and forth in community college. And at this point in time, I'm I did a. Uh, 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 not a Tough Mudder, uh, Spartan Sprint, which is three oh, yeah. miles, three and a half miles of obstacle courses. And I finished that thing really quickly, but I realized very, very fast, I hate running. Mm -hmm. So I decided to find my passion. Some I, I despise running. Like Everyone's like, oh, you get to the end of it and you, you just feel so euphoric. And I said, yeah, that's because you're done. That's called Stockholm <laughs> Syndrome, everybody. Yeah, when you're running, you don't feel good when you do it. You feel good when you're done. When you're lifting weights for me, I get this euphoric feeling when something's in my hand, that weight's moving up. I just feel excited. I feel happy. Um, so anyway, he and I challenged each other to uh, see what a powerlifting meet was all about. And I ended up going to the state games without him. It was just, you know, everyone can sign up. Everyone can kind of do it. And that was my introduction to powerlifting. And back then for a 165-pound weightlifter, because uh, I weighed in at 151 pounds for the 165 pound weight class. It used to be a big deal if you could pull, deadlift uh, 405 pounds, uh, bench 250, and squat 400 plus. Now these 165 pound guys are just blowing it out of the water. This talent wow. that is coming out because the sport is becoming insane. If you're 165 and you're not deadlifting at least 600 plus pounds, so almost 200 pounds more, you are not even competitive nationally, not, not internationally, nationally. That's how insane this is. This sport has become, and I love watching that grow. So I made that jump um, when I was back in Lincoln, and then part of my moving down here with uh, the girl that I went to high school with, because uh, we started going out right after high school. She moved down here for college. Um, I looked up a power. I said powerlifting in Kansas City, and this team popped up, and I got a squat with a man who set a world record on the squat. He was the first American to walk out and squat nine over 900 pounds classic raw. And it was absolutely one of the craziest things I got to be a part of seeing that transition. He's been 600 pounds. And again, he's built a community around being positive. And that's the vibe that I got. You know, that's the vibe that I want to build for myself. I got that in powerlifting. I have that with the long hairs. And that's where that's what my life is about. Right. Trying to be as positive as I can to try awesome. to make the most change. Yeah. It's great, man. Fantastic philosophy and uh, carrying it through all the different aspects. Uh, it's awesome to have you just in the, in the posse, dude. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit more hair, man. Uh, excessive, pretty long now. Have you had any long hair problems that have popped up over the last year? You said it was starting to get a little bit busted on the ends, did a little bit of a maintenance trim. It was getting tangled. What else was, what else was going on over there? So uh, right now, the way that my job is working, I do 10-hour shifts at work. And so my hair is in a hat almost all day. In fact, 
specifically not a day goes by that I don't have one of my three uh, hats on my one of my three out of my four beanies. These are the most comfortable hat I own. And so my hair is always tied back up because I work in the food service industry and you can't have food there. So just trying to remember to let it down and detangle it at night, you know, getting that constant yeah. cycle of combing it out so you don't get too many dead ends. So you don't get too many knots that are going to yank out your hair. That's been the biggest challenge for me in the past year is just remembering to literally let my hair down and take proper care of it. Because then, you know, if I, tr if I shower at night, I have to be up at five o'clock in the morning. My hair doesn't dry in time. So, you know, I only get to, I only really wash my hair two, maybe three times a week if I'm lucky. And so there's a whole slew of issues that this past year have just really kind of brought to the forefront. Yeah. And how about when you're lifting and sweating and, and, you know, getting that type of your workout hair, uh, in there, like, how are you managing the post-workout sweat hair when you're only washing twice a week? Uh, crying a lot and hiding it underneath a hat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. It's it. I don't recommend it. Um, I'm trying to, I'm probably going to get some dry shampoo to at least take some of that grease away to keep the fluffiness, you know, close to here. Um, I just, again, part of it is I'm so, I don't know which dry shampoo to really invest in right now. Cause I don't know which one's going to be the best for my hair. Yeah. Um, but I think having a cycle of that, you know, do that before I go to bed to take that grease out yeah. um, is going to be instrumental, you know, part of my nightly routine. Long hair has got to release a dry shampoo yeah, immediately. Um, no, dude, I got your Instagram product. page uh, pulled up here and I see, you know, you got a lot of the head wraps uh, and the hair it looks like it's, you know, in some type of high ball, low ball, high ball variation there. That's your, that's your go-to head wrap with the that high is, ball. That is the head wrap with the highball is the classic gym look. Uh, if I'm doing bench every now and then, I'll uh, you know I'll let it flow a little bit. Sometimes I'll I'll throw in the throw in the beanie, call it good. But that that head wrap highball combo is just a classic. Your hair doesn't get caught underneath the bar. You don't have to keep shifting it around. If you do, throwing it back, throwing it, throwing it around everywhere it doesn't get in your face. And honestly, in Kansas City, the temperature varies so wildly. We can go from uh, just this past week, we've been 40 to 40 to 80, I believe. Um, so the temperature varies wildly. And then in the summer, it gets about 100, you know, a oh, couple yeah. times. Out. It's it's brutal. And we don't have that nice that nice ocean breeze coastal to come breeze. in and cool us down. <laughs> the coastal it, breeze is Lifesaver. Huge. Yeah, it's it. So doing that is like my constant go to. And if I'm going to be honest, I am very, very. I don't know if it's good to say this superstitious about which head wraps I use for which lifts and oh, which, uh, wait, wait, let's dig into this a little bit. What's the, so if you take O2 head wrap here, the good luck one, <laughs> the good luck one, it depends on the lift. So if you take a okay. look, uh, cause you have my Instagram pulled up, yeah. um, is if you look at today's post, uh, I am terrible with remembering the names. It's the badged uh, camo one. I just yeah, the sit a, rep, the sit rep, the sit rep, the yeah. sit rep. I just pulled a lifetime double PR uh, oh, 507. Nice. I've never done that before. So the sit rep Sick. is an absolute go to, an absolute banger. If you go back and look at a lot of my deadlift videos recently, yeah. that's the one. Uh, bench, it's kind of a go to. Squats, uh, again, the sit rep just seems to be the one that gets me the most. Looks like you luck. get the yeah, uh, you got the Tex Mex going though with the squat. A I lot do. of Tex Mex with the squat. <laughs> got the Tex Mex. I got the uh, lumberjack, the black and red checkerboard. Uh, <laughs> ooh, and then I have, uh, like I said, there's there's just a ton in there. If you go back and take a look, my powerlifting meet. Um, because some of these I some of these are hard to wear to the gym. Like the black mamba is my yeah. hands down favorite head wrap. No of way, all time. Nice. It's it's gotten to the point where I've I've worn it and washed it and it's five years, it's <laughs> three, four years old now. A little uh, worn. It it's a little worn. You can see my you can see my forehead through it. Um <laughs> that was an original you know, I like it. Yeah, it's hey, that's that's what it's all about. Uh let's see. I'm trying to find my powerlifting meat. The one my combo there, if you take a look at that, there's something very special from that day. Uh I decided that I was going to wear my long hairs, which I'm wearing today, yeah. my long hair shirt underneath my singlet, yeah. and this very specific head wrap. This is this was the meat PR head wrap. This is what life is about. Like I said, <laughs> I've got that, and right now on my wrist, I actually have from the fin and tackle release, I have the yeah. tiger oh, one yeah. on, I believe. Excellent. So I'm... 
the hair tie does not matter as much, but the combo of everything else is ultra important. If it's not, there's, there've been some head wraps that I've worn and I had a bad day and I was like, Nope, can't wear this one to the gym ever again. Or yeah. I'll try it on a different lifting day. I was like, yeah. but it's never coming back for this specific exercise. You're cut. And it's you're cut. <laughs> it's I'm like, you're cut from the team. You look great on my wall right now, boys, <laughs> but you're comfortable. I love you, but you're cut. And actually uh, I do have one very, very special head wrap. Um, I ended up getting the dark blue. Uh, I can't remember which one it is. Uh, dark blue head wrap. And I actually wore that on my wedding day. No way. Hell yeah. yeah. Like at the wedding or like after the wedding? Uh, <laughs> no, I wore it for, I, while I was walking down the aisle, that head wrap was on my head. No way. We got to see pictures yes, of this. Yes, man. That is Send epic, it. dude. Hell yeah. Let me, let me see <laughs> if I can find this. Cause I have a few pictures from it, but this was hands down, uh, I'm pulling from my wife's Facebook page because she is much better at this. But yeah, it's it was a September. It was it was September. So I was like, okay, it's either going to be nice and warm or nice. And, you know, it's going to be like I'm, I was hoping for that, like 70, 75 degrees. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it was like 85, 90 that day. So I was just oh. pouring sweat. I'm wearing a suit. <laughs> I am dying yeah. over here. And <laughs> that was honestly super duper uncomfortable i'm about to let's see if i can find this uh there is sydney on her wedding day sweat there just is. pouring down your forehead all over your suit i it, gotta get the blue head wrap on I, immediately i had to <laughs> if i if i hadn't done that i would have glistened like a honey ham the vice admiral <laughs> is uh i believe the one we're talking about here yeah just the dark blue uh, if you could have done a branded one on the wedding walk would have been appreciated uh, though bro <laughs> uh you know what uh, hopefully it never ha happens but if all major life events i will oh, wear no. one actually uh this is gonna sound this is gonna sound uh, this is gonna sound bad uh so in this again I'm, I'm putting this as a as a reference out there uh last year my father unfortunately passed away um which is why i was able to get the forearm tattoos uh because he never liked tattoos but he always supported my long hair he's always asked questions but uh, I ended up wearing one of the head wraps uh, that reminded me of him on the day that we put him uh, in the ground. And to me, you know, that's what the long hairs are about. Like I said, it's creating those special moments. It's creating things that remind me of who I am, what I want. Uh, here we go. And it's it's genuinely a part of my everyday life. Let's see. Uh, all right. Phenomenal, we're going to do this. Phenomenal, dude. Phenomenal. Just, uh, we're going to do this the old-fashioned way. While you're cheers. pulling that up, let's uh, cheers to Mr. Morehouse. Yeah, cheers, man. Appreciate you sharing that. Definitely. Not a problem. Uh, there we go. In a text message to you, Rubio, I just sent that out. Sick. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what we got here. Screen. Let's see. Yeah, put it up towards the camera. Oh, shit. I think you sent the wrong one, dude. <laughs> uh, downloading. <laughs> It's a big file, man. This is a big <laughs> file. Dang. At least three gigs. Oh, man. This is huge. <laughs> Got to open up some bandwidth. Well, dude, it's so great to just, just hear, man, that, uh, you know, Shit. I know it's not really the products themselves, but what they represent and hearing uh, what that means to you, it just means so much to us. I'm very uh, touched and by that and uh, really honestly inspired um to just be better and uh yeah man it's just i wonder what other like i would I, I would love to hear more stories from other people who have purchased a lot of the products like you and and if they have that same kind of connection like you're describing because it's powerful it is <laughs> it's honestly what what it represents is you know this is going to sound, I'm about to use Captain America. Yep. There we go. Like I said, right in that, uh, right there. That was on my head all day. I was pouring sweat. <laughs> Phenomenal. Matched my suit perfectly. Phenomenal. Dude, it, it does. does. It looks great. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Down, put it down just a little bit. There you go. Oh yeah. That's phenomenal. so like I said, Hey, like the shield of Captain America, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not the shield. It's what the shield represents. That's important. Yeah. And every long-haired item represents something to somebody, 
whether it's the serum, the shampoo, the head wraps, which are different than the headbands, mm. the hair ties, the XL hair ties, which are also different from the headbands, though they sometimes look similar. The tank tops, you know, if you guys released a uh, uh, a long hairs chubbies, I'd probably end up getting those too. But oh, every yeah. single item represents something to somebody and what you guys have been able to build and create and really enforce a community around. I don't know if that's the right word, but enforce this community around is the idea that, again, you don't have to be determined by what you look like. You're determined by, again, your actions. You're determined by your support. You know, supporting children with hair loss is an absolutely amazing cause. There are just hands down the way that you have guys built this community isn't about the products. It's about the people. For sure, man. Uh, and really appreciate hear, hearing that from you. And even more, though, uh, sending some cred back your way. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't do it, you know, or 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 and we wouldn't have what we got because it is the, the guys. It's all about the guys, man, and the guys who are putting the energy out and asking for more and needing more and telling us what they want. And we're just trying to serve you guys. So thank if, you, bro. Yes. If people weren't <laughs> pumped like that, we would have. Yeah, you know, we, we would, wouldn't be. We wouldn't be pumped. In, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's circular. It's, it's circular. circular for sure. <laughs> it's yeah. badass, man. To know that what we put out attracts that kind of uh, mentality and philosophy and just attitude towards life is, I mean, really, there's nothing more we could hope to do. And it just can just juice yeah tons of juice dude i need to go hit a personal pr of yes man you guys gotta right go now. follow <laughs> brian morehouse on instagram it's the real low holly dude these pr videos are freaking badass man and also there's a name behind low holly i don't yeah. know if i told you this oh, yeah, in, sorry, uh, no, let's hear it no i wanted to no it's it's all good so means. it's actually three words two words combined into this singular name so low ha lee long haired lifter that's it mm. that's the secret behind the name even no my way. instagram handle my youtube uh, channel the one was low the long haired lifter yeah yeah so yep. it's just an abbreviation of the long haired lifter phenomenal yep wow dang <laughs> <laughs> coming with hey, the heavy hits how is dude. it uh it's awesome in the in the powerlifting community it kind of seems like there is a good representation of long hairs you got uh i mean i don't know we, you know professor marvin right we're homies with him right. uh uh what's that other guy who's just absolutely massive i want to say his name's dan dan green yeah dan, yeah, dan green the, yes dude okay when i first looked up powerlifting yeah. i saw the picture of this absolute slab of a man like yeah. this man i mean this with the most respect towards him it looks like he had to walk through a door sideways because his shoulders were too wide totally. and i there was always a rumor that his hair was sponsored by l'oreal <laughs> like that's how yeah. good his locks like it always on point and this man carries the locks on to this day he's a little thinning right now but he still carries on that locks and i was like man powerlifting isn't just shaved head dudes it's jack dudes with long hair i yeah. am in. yeah <laughs> have you connected with uh professor marvin have you guys ever got any any work in i have not because i believe he's up uh last time that i saw he was up in uh oregon washington area and i've never actually been i've never been further west than san diego and i've never been further north than san diego in that west coast side <laughs> okay got it got it dude we we got to get both you guys out here definitely. Dude, you would love to lift together for sure definitely be freaking awesome <laughs> yeah i am that and you know what he has he has a lot that he can teach me i've that's the thing with lifting. There's always so much to learn. You learn so much about yourself. You learn so much about your body and you can learn so much from other people around you. It's just great. I, that's why I love it. Yeah, man. Uh, that's a great thing about Jesse Marvin. He's really unassuming. And even though he's at the level that he's at, he doesn't make you feel like you are like, he's, he's a great coach. Yeah. He's going to talk you up. He's going to explain the concepts from a scientific standpoint, but at the same time, he's still a bro. And the new mullet look is just like fantastic. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's 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 the man. 
we gotta we gotta all link up do a team lift we've done a few lifts with him and uh every time it was like he adjusted us very slightly on on things we were doing in our, in our movement and it i'm not even kidding like instantly added like 10 20 pounds to like what we were doing and we we're like holy shit this is nuts definitely <laughs> yeah i think i think one of the first videos that i watched with him and you guys was the bench video yeah that you guys did with him yeah i mean we have a lot of uh you know we can make a lot of gains probably in a lot of areas <sighs> when you're at your more peak level like where you're at it's harder to just get a can't just 10 pound uh gain real quick you know no no <laughs> oh there are certain times where a 10 pound gain is is nice it comes along yeah yeah hey just tell us while we're touching on weights again here just a little bit about your consistency and i mean we've all had i've had a lot of runs for you know two three years at a time and generally over if you look at broadly you know the last probably nine or ten years i've been pretty consistent but there have been ebbs and flows or maybe i get off course for a month or so but over covid this has been my worst stretch i finally am like barely getting back into it but even through the whole covid and quarantine and everything i mean like clockwork man you've been in there you're one of the most consistent guys that i've seen just talk a little bit how do, where does the consistency come from so the consistency comes from again when i was younger with my with my dad it really started with him it was you know you have to get up you have to if you make a commitment to something you have to follow through i was only allowed to quit two things before i was 18. the first was football i just didn't fit in didn't mesh with the crowd and i quit uh one game before the final game uh good mental decision for me uh, and then i quit marching band again not a good fit for me but those are the only two things and other than that it was my dad said hey you made a commitment. You got to practice it. You got to do what you preach. You have to be there every single day. And for me, it's the same thing with work, right? I've made a commitment to that job. You know, it's an exchange of goods. I'm getting paid. I'm giving them a service back. So I better be there on time, 6 a.m. Every now and then, you know, I'm I, I'm a little special. I'm on salary, so I can kind of waltz in at 6.03. But it's that same <laughs> consistency, just day in, day out. And there are definitely days where it's hard, especially, you know, um, you know, there's, there've been a ton of days where it's hard to go in, but it's harder to, for myself. And it, we could consider it almost an addiction at this point. It's harder for myself to say, oh, I don't want to go to the gym than it is for me to say, oh, I want to go. Now it's, now it's such an ingrained habit in my system. It's like, well, I got to go. I got to go. I got to get better. I want to go. I want to do these things. Yep. And again, going back to, um, maybe bringing down the mood a little bit, but it, it, it's all for a purpose, right? It's that consistency. Um, the day that my uh, father passed uh, was a deadlift day. Uh, he passed at uh, 7.44 in the morning. My wife and I were sleeping in my parents' basement. We got a call from my mother uh, calling me up to the hospital. And we went there. We went through all the stuff that you have to do for that. Um, and I looked at myself and I said, you know, I just want to go to the I want to go to the place that I feel most comfortable. I want to go to the place where I can forget about my problems for a little bit. Um, and to me, again, it's that therapy. It's that addiction. It's getting in there. Um, and it's it's really being able to forget about the outside world for a little bit. So sometimes it's sometimes it's an escape, sometimes it's a focus, but you don't motivation only gets you so far. Dedication is what gets you there. Inspiration can stop, motivation can stop. Dedication is what keeps pushing you through every single barrier that you are physically and mentally capable of doing. Again, you can get that nice little jump start that little NAS boost for motivation. If you're going to be doing a big lift again, getting that motivation is going to be huge, but the dedication is what got you into the gym that day. The dedication is what gets you the changes that you want to see. The dedication is what really ties back to my whole life. It's that dedication. It's that commitment. It's that consistency. If you're not giving it your all, then what's the point of being there? What's the point of doing it? Absolutely, man. And also another thing that comes with that is discipline. And how when you are so dedicated and disciplined in, in doing something consistently, how that also affects so many other aspects uh, of your life. Uh, and, and one thing, too, I think I, I feel you with the therapy about really just any type of fitness that you do, you know, if you if it's a run or a lift or whatever. Uh, but after that kind of therapy session, there's always like clarity. You know, if you went into the prior to the gym, you're asking yourself some questions and you're like, Hey, I don't know what to do about this or that, or you're like stressed out. Like when you come out, you're like, Oh, I just need to do this. 
<laughs> like, you know, it's, yep. it almost just gives you answers sometimes, which is crazy. <laughs> it clears your mind and lets you and lets you really go. And honestly, I will say that we got very lucky during this whole COVID shutdown thing. Our gym was shut for like a month, a yeah. month and a half, maybe somewhere in there. Um, and a couple weeks, literally a couple weeks before COVID, um, my wife and I ended up buying some extra pound plates for the gym uh, and a cut and a set of, of power block dumbbells. And this was back when that stuff was still reasonably priced. So the power block dumbbells were sitting at about. $400 for a pair. Now they're at like $900 for a used pair and weights. We bought them for 45, 50 cents a pound. And now they're a dollar 50 used. Um, and so we ended up filling up the entire gym just luckily before COVID. Cause I was like, Oh, you know, we should just get ourselves some extra stuff in case the weather goes bad or one of our parents visits or we need to get a quick workout. And then boom, literally two days after I bought the weights, everything shut down. Wow. Good timing. Yeah. To have some stuff at least. Instrumental. Well, uh, just speaking to your dedication, uh, it was probably before we started recording, but me and El Moreno cracked a beer and we said, yo, are you uh, having a beer tonight? And you almost, you thought about it for a second. And you're like, ah, uh, and we're like, no, dude, don't, if you don't want to, he's like, yeah, actually tomorrow's my cheat day. So I'd better not guys. <laughs> yeah. And that's like huge peer pressure. Like when would, when would you want to drink a beer more than hanging with the boys on the <laughs> podcast? And you didn't. And that was fucking awesome, dude. So, yeah. uh, just demonstrating that commitment and that dedication right there. And I hope you have just a huge cheat day tomorrow. <laughs> uh, last week was, I still know what I'm going to have for dinner tonight, tomorrow night. Uh, last week we went to a Tex-Mex. I ended up getting, and this was a bad sign. I ended up eating two bowls of their free tortilla chips, which are like my favorite food. <laughs> and then I was like, Hey, yeah. can I get one of your burritos and two tacos? And I was thinking they were going to be, you know, street soft shell tacos, so, you know, <laughs> a little small. No, these were full size, like the same size as the burrito that I ordered. And I should have known that when the, when the waiter went, are you sure you want two tacos? And I went, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. He just walked out and I looked at that and I went, oh, this is, this was a mistake. This was, <laughs> I, I made it through. And then we went and got ice cream from a little shop here called Betty Ray's that makes some really good, uh, unique flavors. And I had a, uh, I did dealer's choice on both my flavors. Oh, and so wow. I was, they've oh, got so some they really good stuff. Up. <laughs> they did. They have like a goat cheese, apricot, pecan one. Oh my uh, goodness. They've got a mint chocolate chip. You know, they got some of the classics. They've got cereal milk. The weirdest one that I've had from there though, was a barbecued ice cream. Barbecue ice cream. Whoa. Barbecue ice cream. So what they did is they created, I'm not sure. I can't remember what the flavor of the ice cream. It's like the actual ice cream itself was that little bit of a barbecue taste, but what they did, and this was a crazy part, they candied uh, the meat. So it had a nice kind of, you still had a little bit of that meaty taste behind it, but oh, you had a nice wow. like brown sugar on the outside. So it was like nice and succulent. And it, I was blown away again. I eat weird things all the time. And this was right up my alley. Ice cream, meat, love it. <laughs> yeah, dude, with you, I'm trying that. the weird shit. Yeah, uh, that sounded pretty pleasant, though. Really, it's it's an experience. So, uh, a couple more things I want to ask about. You are a guest contributor on the Long Hairs blog. You've authored or penned two blog posts. Uh, tell us a little bit about those. Uh, the first one, I believe, chronologically, was men, women, and the respect hair can teach us. Uh, really thoughtful blog post. Maybe some other guys have gone through uh, experience a little bit. Just tell us a quick recap of that post. So this was really about things that I had to learn while growing out my hair. When I was younger with short hair, I always used to make fun of my girlfriends for why it would take their hair so long to dry. Why it would take them so long to get ready? Why can't you just do it, you know, perfectly? You know, why are you taking six hours? But through growing out my hair, um, I really started to understand why it would take them so long. They had specific routines every single time. Um, it was to get the most out of their hair and to feel presentable. And I really identify with that. Now, again, it's, you know, the first thing that I look at is like, well, how am I going to wear my hair when I go out? Am I going to put it up? Am I going to be able to leave it down over my shoulders? Where are we going? What am I going to do? And then it's okay. Do I have time to wash my hair? Do I need a head wrap? Because, because it's going to be hot. <laughs> Correct. Is it going to be hot? Is it going to be cold? Do I need a head wrap? Do I need a, do I need a beanie? Am I going to be able to wash it? Is this, you know, am I going out in four hours or am I going out in 25 minutes? You know, now all these things before, you know, with short hair, hop in the shower, hop out of the shower, hair is dry in five minutes and you're good yeah. to go. 
Yeah, and yeah. Not, you know, you can throw some gel in it and you're fine. And the gel, you can kind of adjust. <laughs> but I didn't understand all that commitment, all that time that they would do. So I'd always just make some really terrible jokes. I'd be like, I'd be like yeah, <sighs> my hair dries quicker than a duck's back. Just random stupid things like that. And every now and then it got my arm slapped. And I definitely deserved it for some of those stupid jokes. And it was a little bit, honestly, disrespectful because I didn't understand where they were coming from. Yeah. And so that was that was uh, a, that was writing number one for you guys. Yes, uh, that's killer, dude. Just uh, you've you've mentioned a couple of instances, just growing and maturing as a man and being able to accept that I maybe said some dumb things before, did dumb things earlier. But we're all just, you know, trying to figure it out. And sometimes like growing the long hair gives you a different perspective that you would have never considered before. And that was really the whole topic of that first blog post. Uh, if you're listening, go check it out. It's men, women, and the respect hair can teach us over on the long hairs blog. And then you came with a heavy summer slam action after that. Your next blog post, the long hairs of the WWE. Yes, this was probably one of my favorite things that I got to research and look at, you know, you're looking at the great ones from all time, the men on your Mount Rushmore of wrestling. And you take a look at it. The long hairs have helped shape and change wrestling. One that I should have added that I didn't, you know, Andre the Giant, arguably one of the most famous yeah. wrestlers of all time, oh, is a man. long hair. He is. But his, his hair is so curly and it's it's a triangle. Like his hair yeah. was a triangle. But yeah. if you wash it, I bet you this I, it was the same length as mine because it was super tight. But uh. he's a long hair. The you know now Dude, you did have, you ever watch the Andre documentary on HBO? Uh yes, and that was absolutely astounding. Oh, it's like, so good, amazing, amazing. Dude, Andre Andre was just such a unique and gigantic human being, and probably if I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb and say he's one of the largest long hairs of all time. Him, <laughs> I'd almost put <laughs> uh, probably uh, the great. The great Kali might be slight, almost as tall as Andre the Giant was, but not nearly as influential. Um, but yeah, then, like I said, this post started off with the nature boy, Ric Flair, the most rootinest, tootinest, <laughs> knife yeah. edge chop, ultra platinum <laughs> flow. <laughs> then you had the macho man, Randy Savage. He was always the cream of the crop that always rose to the top. With attitude and pop, the macho man was made for the list of the long hairs. And you had uh, Brett yeah. the Hitman Hart. You had undoubtedly the Undertaker. That he was. That's the original hair whip. Go that's on, the yeah, original the under Undertaker's all time. Yes. Puts puts hands on there, flips the hair back, does the tongue. That is yeah. the classic WWE iconic image. Other than obviously Hulk Hogan, another long hair who threw Andre the Giant and defeated him in a WrestleMania, creating power, power slam. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you can't forget about him. Ultimate Warrior might have been an interesting wrestler, but he also had an interesting head of lettuce. Uh, again, I'm just moving down the list. I think Mick Foley is probably one of my favorites because he's yeah. always walked. He's gotten one haircut that I've seen in the past 30 years. And he <laughs> that gift is so good. <laughs> hey, so we should talk about Mick Foley for a second because he is uh, really just an unbelievable. Like when you look at all those other guys that are above him in our list here, right? huge everyone's jack i mean andre the Rock giant maybe wasn't so jacked but it doesn't matter he was absolutely unbelievably massive yeah. then mick foley is just kind of like this like Beer ball drinking. he's like a i mean he's just like a kind of a chubby guy who doesn't look that strong but man he did some of the craziest shit in the ring out of any of the guys on this list <laughs> and don't let this list distract you from the fact that undertaker <laughs> threw mankind off hell in a cell in yeah. 1997 one of the scariest moments in <laughs> wwe but it's also one of the most iconic getting to hear that like, getting to hear that every single every now and then just gets you like oh you feel that magic that was in yeah. the 90s yeah. wrestling in the 90s something just special like the long <laughs> you had long hairs all over the place with <laughs> TX. oh it was insane yeah Dang. Dude, phenomenal so are you still a big wwe fan are you really into it as as much as you were or where are you at not, not quite as much as i was uh so there's actually uh a youtube channel that i get to watch uh, that kind of recaps all the episodes again since i'm either at the gym or i'm trying to get some sleep when wwe is normally playing i just get to watch and recap and really yeah. experience it in 20 minutes or less which 
not the best way to go about it, but I keep up to date with what's going on. You know, I keep up to date with who's the long hairs. I check out, there's a, a squared circle subreddit where I get to check in and pop in. And honestly, I will say that one of my favorite moments though is when Edge came back. That man's hair is legendary. Like his pop came back, he yeah. threw his hair back. He did his whole crazy eyed look. And that was the moment that I was like, it's back. It's back, it, baby. The yeah. whole thing is back. Edge is here. And he had that hair. He had that ridiculous flow going on. And if you take a look at it, he's got a little bit of, a, dare I say it, character going on with his hair. It's not just blonde anymore. He's got a little bit of that. He's got some dark streak. He's got some grain going on. And he is a man's man. He does not hide it at all. He is proud of his hair. Yeah. It is unfortunate that uh, Triple H left the ranks of long hair and seems like it's a committed no hair from – I. <laughs> I, I think I think I understand why, and it's a shame. I you know it, he did look a little thinning there towards the end. Uh, I think it was okay. probably yeah. I, it was happening a little bit there towards the end, but you know if he he was wanting to run the company, he's wanting to have a specific look. And I got to say, if he was walking towards me in a dark alley with yeah. both his long hair and his shaved head, I'd turn the other way no matter what because that is a scary looking dude. Yeah. So he basically runs the WWE now, right? He's like the new he boss. He is. He's poised to take over once Vic Mc, Vince McMahon either dies or decides to retire. He'll probably never retire and he might never die. He might like, he might be like <laughs> Queen Elizabeth who's 99. Um, yeah. But right now he's in charge of arguably one of the indie scenes, popular mainstream. It's weird to say it like that. NXT. Uh, he makes a lot of the booking decisions for there. And NXT is really popular with the hardcore fans. Um, you know, Triple H knows how to write a story. He knows what the crowds want. And, you know, it, you get to kind of play back and forth because he's grown up with the business. He knows how it runs. And honestly, it's it's from everything that I've heard. Again, everyone has some negative stories about them, but people who are up and coming do appreciate what Triple H has taught them and been able to do with them uh, in the company. So I think that if he is able to take over uh, fully in the future, it'll be for the better of the WWE. Yeah. Hey, there's not many uh, entertainment outlets slash sports that have uh 70 to 80 percent of the talent with long hair <laughs> and the wwe is one of them yeah i mean it's most true. it's more more Vast guys have long hair than don't than not <laughs> yeah. almost a pre prerequisite <laughs> yeah it, you got you got kofi kingston with his nice locks they always on point there uh you've got oh i mean obviously the one of the main events from wrestlemania this year involved two long hairs and somebody who was a former long hair, Daniel Bryan, it involved uh, Roman Reigns, it involved Edge, it involved Daniel Bryan. All three of those men either have long hair or have had long hair in the past. Yeah, it's and just part of the persona, right? And the to be able to like whip and move in the in the ring, it gives a little bit more action, like action and flair. Yeah, just flair, no flavor. For sure. For sure. It's dynamic that you can do is yeah. you can use your long hair to hide communications in the middle of the match. Like if your hair is draping over you yeah. and you're above the opponent, you guys can have a uh, quick conversation seeing it. Yeah. Uh, and so that's yeah. happened a few times. Like, again, wrestling for all intents and purposes is a predetermined show. But what it also is, is a beautifully choreographed, let's call it what it is. It's a beautiful choreographed physical dance. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's like called, Figure skating or uh, uh, diving, not a, uh, not 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 anything impressive. You're like these are men, 200 plus pounds, jumping massive massive amounts into the air, yeah. not getting it. It's it's honestly the athleticism that it takes to be in the ring and one not only not injure yourself but not injure other people around you is huge. Yeah, the physicality of it. I mean, you're getting beat up for sure. Like you're you're feeling it. But the thing that's amazing is they're doing it, what five nights a week or something? Like <laughs> back to back. Around. They to had back. a tough life too. Early on, they yeah. not no health insurance oh, and they're all those just early like guys straight cash, yeah. like five hundred bucks to yeah. go and just beat your body <laughs> yeah. to a pulp for a freaking hour and then do it again tomorrow night on Monday night raw. <laughs> Dude, side note, Edge looks like Jason Worth. Just Google that. It's all over the place. Uh, former Washington Nationals outfielder and Philadelphia Phillies virtually look identical. Just if you're uh, into that, quick Google search. If you remember, my wife actually says that uh, 
you look a little bit like edge too dude i'll take the edge <laughs> any any old day i'll take that one uh more often get joe dirt but uh you know you just gotta roll with the punches i'll take edge any old time i went to the gym five days this year so far so uh, maybe closer on that edge thing <laughs> every every day every day, every day we back. get closer to edge. Yes, every day we get closer you know what i think i think i know what my vote is for your uh uh, 2021 uh, Halloween costume. I would like to see Edge. Ooh. Wow, Ooh. I better keep hitting the gym. Five days is <laughs> not going to cut it for that. Hey, you got enough. You got time right now. I do. <laughs> I do. Uh, we're already doing it for Charlie's wedding, the wedding shred. Yeah, wedding shreds. And uh, we shouldn't go without mentioning that you portrayed the macho man, Randy Savage, in dynamic fashion some Halloweens yeah. ago. So one of these days we'll have to bring back the macho man versus Hulkamania oh, in that would be the sick. ring yeah. on Halloween Eve. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, you know what? I can kind of do the macho man voice. It all comes down to just – how much I believe in myself. Yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. <laughs> Sounded everyone pretty damn good a minute ago. Hey, everyone thinks the Macho Man is just a voice, but you gotta get the mannerisms. In there. <laughs> yeah. there and he talks and he talks and he talks. And then Macho Man gets really high and he gets really excited and then he pulls it back in because he knows it's right on every single word of the Macho Man ring. <laughs> <laughs> so good, dude. So good. Um, Okay, another thing a lot of these WWE guys have is tattoos, but you also have a tattoo. We touched on it early, right in the intro. You flashed it up. I think we maybe made one or two comments about it, but man, that thing is all over the gram. I we have been debating about this here at the HQ for a while now because you know we're thinking about everybody's thinking about getting getting blasted here with the mark everyone's thinking and, about it not everyone's doing it yeah but hey we got a man here who did it all right and uh and so you know was your decision to get it the way you did because you're the holding the bar the orientation you did because when you're holding the bar it's always up that's the debate we have had raging over here walk us through your decision process you could have put it anywhere why'd you go there why the orientation all the thought process you went through on this uh, experience you had so my constant theme of split second decisions is in play right now this this is going all the way into split second decisions so um, my wife and i woke up one morning i think it was a friday and we were like hey Let's go get tattoos today. <laughs> nice no plan. It was, hey, we have a little bit of extra money in our bank account. Let's go see if we can find a tattoo parlor that's open. Um, El Moreno is just waiting for that day to happen. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, hon, let's go get <laughs> tattoos today. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. My <laughs> wife, girl. <laughs> she loves tattoos. She loves long hair. Actually, that's why she started dating me. Uh, we met on Tinder. If that's, nice. if that's okay to say. Oh, but yeah. she's like, Ruby on okay. Tinder. <laughs> Mary. Hey. Hey, it's okay. Married through Tinder. And guess what? She uh, She's like, I wouldn't have swiped right on you if you hadn't had long hair. I was like, awesome. Ooh. So long hair got me right. So anyway, um, we're, we wake up. We're like, all right, let's go see if we can find a couple different tattoos. This is how two uh, of my tattoos have gone. My first tattoo was a split second decision. I was sitting there with a buddy and he's like, hey, man, uh, let's go get a tattoo because I was horrified of needles. He didn't think I'd say yes. I was like, you know what? If we can find a tattoo parlor before it closes, I'm down. Mm-hmm. He's like, wait, really? We literally, he scarfed down the rest of his dinner and we left the uh, restaurant that we were at within five minutes and went to four separate tattoo parlors to get my first tattoo. So everything is split second with me. Um, But so we wake up, my wife and I, she's like, let's get a tattoo. I said, absolutely. I have some spare money. I was like, we got like 340 bucks that we can tip towards, like split between us evenly. Let's go find a place. Let's go talk to him. She walked in. She kind of wanted a Lilo and Stitch. She wanted Stitch on her arm. Um, kind of nice watercolor saying Ohana. Uh, and she found that the artist that there was willing to do it, did some really beautiful watercolor work. And I was sitting there and the lady was like, what's something that you would like to do? And I had the back of my phone. I was like, you know what? I think it's time. I think it's time to get this. And so I told her, I said, if you wouldn't mind, uh, trying to see if I can do this tattoo, seeing if you can do this tattoo, um, let's put it on my body. Let's see what we can do. And Honestly, taking a taking a look at this, I'm really excited by what she was able to accomplish. There's detail. I don't know if you all can see it right there on the there rope. Go. Yeah, yeah. Um, you got some nice. There we go. 
you got some it, it, it's it's just a solid tattoo and it was like 120 bucks for something this big it took her an hour um and honestly the reason why i put it on my arm we'll talk about this lining on my arm in a second but the reason why i put it on my arm is i want people to see that i'm aware what my life i am in it doesn't matter if I go bald in 20 years. It doesn't matter if I go bald next week. Mm. The long hairs will always be a part of me. And it's always something that I can start a conversation with. And honestly, yeah. I, you know, about if I'm in public and I'm going shopping and I'm by myself, every single time I'll get a conversation with somebody and they'll be like, hey, what does your tattoo mean? And I go on, I go on my little spiel <laughs> and I said, honestly, tat- this tattoo for me represents not judging people for based who, you know, based on who they are. It's all about you know, it's judging people based on their actions, not their looks. I said, you know, and the community that this is representative of is fighting for equality um, for, you know, long hairs and they're fighting for equality just across the board. Again, I am a working professional. I don't necessarily have a four year degree. I'm in this. I'm a supply chain uh, coordinator, director, whatever you want to call it of a of a company that's making about 15 million dollars a year. So I get to see you know, how bringing in food and I work in the food industry. So bring all of that in is, um, you know, something a little bit different, something a little bit challenging, but as for placement, it was, I wanted it to be in a, in an area where I could bench the next day so <laughs> I could wrap the, uh, wrap my wrist wrap around here. So that was part okay. of this requirement. Yeah. It's in there. Bench day um, was the next tomorrow. day. So <laughs> yes. bench, bench, bench day is important, right? Yeah. Um, and so from there, um, I really just wanted it to be able to, when I turned and looked at it, like when I turned my palm towards me, I wanted to line up exactly dead center with my middle finger. So I would be reminded oh, of nice. what it means to me nice. every single time. It's just taking a look at it and it's like, all right, this is what it means. And then I can get a nice grip on the bar. And again, if you're taking a look at my squat, it's always out here. If you're taking a look yeah. at my bench, you can see it from a bunch <laughs> of different angles. Yeah, Deadlift, yeah. you can't really see it quite as much. But again, for me, as much as this is a, a public thing, this is also a, a private meaning. Yeah. Right. And it's and it's something that is instilled with me until the day that I die. And I think that's important. <laughs> we gotta Fucking go awesome, right dude. now. <laughs> Fucking awesome. Yeah. That is so dope. Dude, thanks for sharing, man. Yeah, dude. It's as uh it's inspiring it's I can't believe you're not calling us out. Like, hey, so why don't you fucking pussies? <laughs> Get the damn mark on you already. You guys know like 50 tattoo artists. You had like five guys on the podcast. You do all this tattoo stuff. You don't even have the freaking thing tatted on you. You guys are weak. <laughs> Dude, you put a meaning to the mark that we never necessarily put in words. Uh, certainly like that is the, I think the, the, the vibe that comes out, the, the voice that comes out from the long hairs, but we never put it in those words before and just that you have that both that public meaning and that personal meaning it just says that that mark itself goes far beyond you know the brand or much less products or anything like that it's freaking bad dude should have been calling us out a year ago living living the mentality the just living he's just living the values yes core value i I had i had a one up uh i can't remember Again, I'm terrible with names. The guy who got the original bound shears on his shoulder blade. Sam, I had to, I Sam, had, yeah. <laughs> I had to, I, he got it on his back and I was like, you know what? This is going to go. I got it. I got to one up. And I think yeah. uh, after that day, I ended up seeing four, three or four more tat- long hair tattoos pop up uh, on your guys' Instagram pages. I think yeah, I might have been number two, number three. I, I will never claim to be number one because Sam is always number one. There's an article about it that you can read at the long hairs dot us. There was a journey. I think there is video evidence of this thing going down. I remember seeing yeah. some video evidence of this stuff, you know, but Dude, I, will, I think I will... you were, I think you were, you were, you were three. It was Sam. Then there was this German guy who's like yeah. a huge early fan. And he hit us up one day and he got it huge on his calf. Like he got on his leg, on his calf, and then you were three. Then you got it, and then I think yours though really spawned a flurry of inspiration, and several other people have got it. There's a few other uh, forearms, same placement as you. Uh, another guy did, I think, same arm, same placement. He might even got a little bit bigger, but the orientation is the other way, and he went with the straight, the mar- flat. Uh, flat, like all no detail. 
just straight flat version. So that's just a whole nother thing. <laughs> Whether you are third or 300th <laughs> yeah. or the placement or the orientation, you are immediately initiated <laughs> into the lifetime assemblage <laughs> of the long hairs fraternal order. Your lifetime, dude, you're in. Flash the badge, dude. You're going to get the, hey, here's the thing. And just so you can flex too. Come on, be honest. 100%. <laughs> bro, bro, everybody who has the shears and, you know, obviously you're the early one. So maybe you even get a little extra bonus VIP, but we are going to, for the great cut 2024, we will have a badge only uh, assembly somewhere. You have to flash it. It has Ooh. to be a tattoo on you. Doesn't matter how big, how small, whatever. You got to flash it to get into this one little section. And in there is just going to be something special. Lit city. <laughs> I am I am 100% down for that because you guys were talking last week about getting it on the uh, left or right arm, doing that nice little flash yeah. of the arm. That way yeah. you can identify yeah. long hairs in the wild. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, what do you think about that as a uh, you know an early adopter of the mark on? Like, do you do you think that's something? Like, you know, you just you flash. Obviously, yours is massive. You just someone's you gonna get, flash a little. But baby I'm saying, one like, and even if you did a little, like, yeah. you know, I'm thinking like a two, two, three inch right here. I, I'm thinking more of a generalized thing that people could do, and it's not they're not like, oh, I got to do my whole arm, but they're like, oh, I'll do that. You know, as long as it's not bench day tomorrow. <laughs> just, <laughs> Any hey. Any size tattoo, anywhere on your body, it doesn't matter. I think that's okay. You know why? Because it has your own meaning. It has yes. your own placement. It has your own ideals behind it. The more that, just like with having long hair, the more the merrier. Yeah, totally. You got uh, it, man. Yeah, I, I would love, I would love to see more long hair tattoos just around. If you are out there and you are considering getting a long hairs tattoo, don't think, do not pass go, do not collect $200. In fact, go spin that $200 and get that tattoo right now. doesn't matter if it's here to do the mustache. doesn't matter if it's the bottom of your foot. Let's do it. Let's make this brotherhood even bigger. It's badass, dude. I'm going. We're going after this. <laughs> We're going. Sierra, call Sierra. Call Sierra immediately. <laughs> dude, Matt Hines has already done it. He did Sam's. Yeah. We got a posse for sure. All right. Um, what you got something? No, I just we're we're coming to the end here. Yeah, dude, we're coming to the end. Man, powerful stuff. Great stories. Thanks for sharing. You know your personal stories, but also your perspective on every everything that you shared today is. Uh, I, I'm coming out of this super inspired, and I can't wait to hit the fucking gym tomorrow, man. First off, but also just the mentality that you have is uh, just powerful for the entire community so can't wait to drop this and uh, have everybody listen to this podcast where can we find you online or where do you want people to send you to follow you and see these prs you're putting up every week bro you can find me at the real low holy on instagram that is the real l-o-h-i-l i find me at low holy on youtube and you can also find my apparel page dropping that shameless plug right there. First step apparel inspired by the quality of the long hairs, trying to build a community of positivity and love. And honestly, if anyone ever has any questions about exercise, about the long hairs, just about anything in general, feel free to reach out to me and I will do my best to help support you in your journey of growing long hair. I will do my best to support you in your journey of getting healthier, no matter if it's weight loss, weight gain, whatever you want. We're here for you. And that's what the community is about. It's about brotherhood. It's about love. It's about support. And it's about just being a long hair. Dude, amazing. Wait, hold on a second. Yeah. Just hold Whoa, on one dude, second about this hell? first step apparel thing. Why do we bring this up as you're closing? This should have been a whole thing we could talk about. Uh, we're going to we're gonna need to chat on this for a second. What is the deal with first step apparel? I'm on the Instagram right now. Is this how you would want people to see? Go to that Instagram page and check that out? Absolutely. Um, so what okay. this is... 
um, I decided to combine a couple of my passions. Uh, one is anime. Uh, Rubio has been on my pod, was on my podcast before, chit chatting a little bit about anime. Long hairs in there, um, and so it's something that I've been passionate about my whole, you know, since I was about 10, 12. I was watching Dragon Ball Z. I was watching all these. There's long hairs all over the place in anime, and they are super powerful. <laughs> Think about this. Goku has long hair in Super Saiyan three. It goes all the way down to his kneecaps. That's one of the most powerful long hairs in the universe. <laughs> and so I was just super passionate about anime. I'm super passionate about lifting. Um, but for me, I'm very much laid back in my clothing choices. You know, I'm a little out loud uh, in personality. So my clothing, I like to dial it back. I like black, white. I don't like having characters all over when I'm out in public. So I wanted to create a clothing brand that reflected that because I've looked around and a lot of them that were anime inspired have the characters on them. They have really, they're really big. They're really loud. And that's just not me. Um, so I decided to kind of put my own spin on things, you know, take some names. Uh, so you have words on there, maybe take a logo or two and redesign it to fit with a lifting aesthetic. Um, and so that's really what my inspiration has been. And over the past, uh, month and a half, my wife actually used part of her stimulus check to buy a heat press. Cause originally I was using a uh, print on demand service, which is okay, but I want to be able to control the, I want to have the highest quality physically possible for the most reasonable price that I can get. And the only way to do that is to invest in myself and bring a heat press in house. So over the coming months, I'm going to be experimenting with creating different designs in house, seeing how that works, creating shirts that aren't only accessible for uh, powerlifting anime nerds, but for <laughs> people who just want to support the brand, right? Because not everything has to be centered around anime, but 95% of the things that I want to do want to revolve around that. So I'll be coming out with <laughs> one or two shirts that if you don't like anime, you can buy this. It'll look dope, I promise. If you do like anime, you're going to appreciate a lot of the uh, subtle jabs that I put in there. And honest, the name was actually inspired by one of my favorite anime, um, Hajime no Ippo. It's a boxing anime. It got me into you know observing the world of boxing. There's some long hairs in there. There's two or three actually very strong long hairs in there. There's some pompadours, you know, which is again long hair. And that's just realistically what my brand is about. It's about bringing that same uh, mentality, bringing that same environment that you guys have created to a different scope. You know, having a nice uh, balance of love, respect, admiration, learning, and high quality gear for the people who deserve it. Dude, it's price. awesome, man. I love uh, just claiming the, you know, nerd gym apparel. Like, that's just awesome, dude. And uh, that's a, you got a niche there. 100%. What, is, what is the promised Natty Land? What does that mean? High quality meats. Uh, so the <laughs> promised Natty Land is based off of and i'll go through this i can explain it shirt by shirt uh so the promise natty land was originally um aimed towards a brand name aimed towards people who get into powerlifting but they're not necessarily uh you know most people do not compete in tested or untested um so tested means that if you compete there's a chance that they're gonna drug test you um, if you compete untested, it means that they're not going to drug test you. So you can kind of get away with whatever you want to be able to do. So the promise Natty land is a, uh, homage to, uh, that aspect of it. It's to the people who want to remain natural their whole life. You know, they might take some way, they might take creatine cause that's natural, but they're not going to be injecting anything into their body. And this is based off of an anime called the promised Neverland and the high quality meets moniker is a little bit of a spoiler for it. Um, but it's that's that was part of the thing uh, just around that. It's hey, it's the promised Natty Land high quality meat. It's basically saying, hey, you're a Natty and you're a high quality meat, baby. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm proud of you. Dude, sick. Ordering now. <laughs> strong by strong. Medium. Uh, correct. The strong, strong uh, <laughs> is probably one of my most subtle designs based off of uh, manga and anime. That's been going on since I believe 1997. Um, it's a little bit of a joke in the community, but I, I really enjoyed that shirt. Uh, another one that I think is surprisingly popular is the hidden depth village. So when you hit that depth in your squats, it's, it's there. You never have to hide it. You're always in front of it. Yes. Um, <laughs> Black bull fit is a classic. The strong, strong, the promised natty land straw hat training goes off of uh, one piece, probably one piece. And this is going to blow people's mind. It's been going on since 1999. It's the third highest selling comic of all time. Not just anime or manga. The only two that beat it are Batman and Superman. No way. Other than that. Holy crap. 
Yeah, that's and Batman and Superman have been going on since 1939, 1942, somewhere in that right. area. Yeah, yeah. And One Piece is just behind them. It's got about another five years left. I think there's the potential for it to pass it. Obviously, Batman and Superman always going to be going. They're 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 an eternal thing. Yeah, in, yeah. in the community yeah. now. Yeah. But if One Piece can take that number two spot just for a little bit, yeah, you know that's going to be one of those things that you take a look at and you go, man, I was a part of history. <laughs> Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Bro, what an amazing time. Thank you for hanging. Thank you for coming on to the podcast. El Rubio is, in fact, making a purchase Processing as payment. we speak right now. He's so stoked on that one. He's buying it live. But Thank uh, you, Chris. Your order has been placed. <laughs> oh, so Perfect. Let's see what the and, uh, customer service support line, let's yeah, see what the yeah. fulfillment looks like here. <laughs> really interested to check in on the customer service for first step apparel and like i said you know what once i bring it all in house i'm going to do a special run of long hair exclusive shirts that i would love to work with you guys on designing and getting out to maybe make I, I'm, I'm i'll make a little bit of a, a purchase on my end and i'd love to give some away to the long hair so they can represent when they're at the gym hell yeah hell yes bro well dude thank you awesome hanging man Glad to have you on Let It Ride, finally. Uh, another blog post, hopefully, coming up. Let's get our oh, next yeah. one. Maybe the biggest long hairs of all time. The most gargantuan, <laughs> the largest <laughs> yeah. humankind strongest. creatures. Yeah. The str or the strongest. Yeah. The, the strongest. huge, Ooh. the That's strongest, two. or That's both. Two. Yeah. Uh, get cracking. Oh, man. Set up with a copy deck. Uh, we need it by tomorrow, though, because we don't have a yeah, blog. Yeah, we need a blog post for this week. <laughs> Think you can rip give that me, off give, give me an hour and a half. Let's see what I can do. <laughs> okay, great. All right, bro. We'll see you out there. Great hanging, man. See Catch you later. See